With 2023 already up and running, majority of us, if not all, always write down resolutions for the new year and start working towards them. The reality is, some of us never start and along the way, some of us fall off. Before seriously getting into content creation, all I had to worry about was my day job. Starting as a youth worker, then I did a personal training gig at a local gym, and then my own PD business, all the while playing competitive rugby and creating content, and as you can imagine, that was quite daunting. So I thought it would be ideal if I shared what makes me consistently create content for you guys whilst juggling all those balls. Buffle up and let's go for the ride. As you might already know, the hardest part is always starting. Not the fancy equipment, the sponsorships, or even the time-consuming production process. Truth be told, we face a lot of resistance because the hard work is far less appealing than the easy stuff. From a personal standpoint, developing good habits helped me get off the blocks and despite being super busy, I still managed to start and that's how I slowly started building momentum. Chances are you've had this more than a million times now. The easiest way is starting with your phone camera then as you grow in the creative space you can upgrade your gear. Once I was off the blocks, after a while I started noticing the things that slowed me down and had to get rid of the dead weight. Having always wanted to create design and tech content, I knew I had my work cut out. The fact that it's time consuming and needs a lot of focus to make any headway, especially in the YouTube space, meant I had to let go some of the things. Even though it was super hard to do so, I closed down my PD business, resigned at the local gym and straight away it opened up so much room for my creative ventures. Soon I realized that was just the beginning and I needed a place where I could work from at home since I couldn't afford renting a studio space. Lucky for me, I had a spare bedroom that straight away became my YouTube studio, but despite the fact that I had a studio space at home, it was in a bit of a story set when I fully delved into the creative world and this in a way became a deterrent, so I had to completely transform it. Here's a quick sneak peek of the transformation. Straight away it became more aesthetically and visually pleasing. Studies have tied visual appeal with productivity in the sense that a more visually appealing setup has a higher likelihood to motivate you to do whatever task you have at hand. I created a space where my most used tools are at arm's reach and that cut down the time I spent setting up tasks and switching between them. I made sure everything is organized and has a designated space which ensures I spend less time searching for my things and have more time focusing on my work. Case in point when my setup was super cluttered, I rarely worked in my home office but after I did the home office makeover, the desire to consistently show up grew tremendously. Once I made sure my work environment is conducive, I planned myself and surroundings. With my environment set, I usually make sure all the distractions and interruptions are at arm's bay. What I normally do is close my home office door, set my phone to do not disturb, close the browser tabs I don't need and put away all the stuff that doesn't pertain to whatever I'm doing at that particular time. I know this can be quite challenging, especially if you're a victim of the rabbit hole that is Instagram and TikTok reels. Don't worry, you won't miss out on anything going offline for a few hours. Once the distractions are out of the way, I normally set a clear goal of what I want to achieve and I usually write them down. Like they say, nothing beats good old pen and paper. If I've got a big project, I usually break it down into smaller pieces which makes it a lot easier to accomplish. For instance, when working on a script, I'd write the outline, then the intro and outro and finish off with filling the body. The smaller the task in your mind, the easier it is to break the resistance. Since it's not easy to do brain intensive stuff hours on end, I normally set myself timers otherwise known as focus sprints and once the timer goes off, I take a short break before getting back into it. It is important not to jump into your distractions as this can completely derail you. Instead, get up, stretch your legs, make yourself a cup of tea, sit in silence or lay your head down for a little bit. At this point, any stress or frustrations I've developed slowly fade away and after a while, I'm ready to jump into another session of productive work. With most of the parts already moving smoothly, I now shift my focus on optimizing my workflow to ensure I'm more efficient and effective. Over here, I normally look at the road bumps and how best I can get them. Some of the things I look at are what are the most repetitive tasks, how long does it take to complete and do I experience any friction in the process. In my case, being a digital creator, editing is an essential part of my craft. When you first use an editing software, you tend to use menus and sub-menus to find your tools and that can be really time consuming. So learning your shortcuts makes the editing process a lot easier and saves you lots of time in the long run. I'm sure most of you who do any sort of editing can relate. 
Another way I optimize my workflow is by automating repetitive tasks like email responses. Going back and forth typing responses can be annoying and time consuming, so automating the process will save you lots of time, which you can put towards other tasks. For those who upload reels, you know how tedious it can be shooting reels every day. Repurposing your long form content makes it a lot easier. For instance, I cut this section from my home office transformation video and turned it into a reel. With my workflow stream flowing smoothly, the next thing I usually have in mind is meeting my deadlines. The fact that I still have to do my day job, turn at least four times a week, play rugby, upload videos to my channel weekly, and still roll out a bunch of reels every week, not to mention the daily life admin, means I have to set strict boundaries for myself, otherwise I'd be engulfed in an overflow of chaos. As humans, naturally we tend to take our sweet time if we know we have a long window to the deadline, although in most cases that leads to the so-called last minute rush, or even worse, not completing the task at all. I'm not completely immune to this and that's where discipline comes in. Regardless of how effective your plan is, if it's not properly executed, it becomes a failure. In as much as it's not easy, looking at the bigger picture is more beneficial, plus if you've heard of the saying discipline equals freedom, this will make more sense. Basically, if you're to complete a task within the time frame you set, it allows you to pursue your other interests, failure to which you'd be forced to forego whatever activity you had planned in order to finish the task, or depending on what type of person you are, choosing not to complete the task and going ahead with your planned activity. Studies have shown that regardless of how challenging the task is, how good the rewards are or how punishing the consequences are, time pressure is always a key determinant for taking action. Looking at it perspectively, it actually makes sense. Let's say I had to submit an assignment tomorrow by 4 p.m. Regardless of the reward or punishment, I have to get it done before the deadline. Moving to another important aspect of my creative workflow, rest equals fewer. We've all heard of the saying, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. And that is so true in every sense. Leisure has been an important part of my everyday routine ever since I was a kid. Time away from my work has been just as important as time on it for my health, my relationships, and to create space for me to come up with good content ideas. Like they say, distance gives us perspective and that is true across multiple facets of life and not just work alone. Spending time exercising, catching up with friends and colleagues has helped me fill up the energy vacuum caused by crazy work hours and the daily hustle and bustle of life. In saying that, I haven't always spent my free time on stuff that improves my life and in all honesty, there's nothing wrong enjoying our guilty pleasures with a bit of regulation. Even though I don't play video games as much as I used to, I still spend a good amount of time playing games like FIFA and NBA 2K23 during my downtime. Judgment aside, our goal should be to spend time on things that give our minds time to rest, think and re-energize. Our leisure should refuel us rather than deplete us. My goal is to become a better creator by continuously improving and learning my craft in the ever-changing landscape that is the digital space. If you've got to this point of the video, leave a thumbs up in the comment section and to see how I put these tips into play, check out my house tour in this video. People of the internet, I'm signing out. Hope you have an amazing year ahead and see you in this video right here.